Hi, and welcome to our program. My name is Bill Munsell, and I want to deal with an issue that's been uh, close to my heart for a long time. So for the next hour, I want you to sit back and relax, and, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to learn from the scriptures. It's, it steps on a lot of people's toes, and if I name names, I say that just to ask you to pray for these people. Um, I'm not judging them. I'm just looking at their fruits. We are to be fruit inspectors, according to the Word of God. So before we get started, let's have a word of prayer. Our most wonderful Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much uh, for this day and for this study. Lord, I pray that you will give ears to hear uh, what you are speaking to them. Lord, I know this is something that is very highly controversial and will upset a lot of people, and a lot of people are going to disagree with me, and, and I, I can still remain friends with them, Lord. So, Lord, I just pray you open the eyes and the ears of these people to see the truth and prayerfully seek this to see if it is true. And, and Lord, I, I will take criticism. I will take responses to this video. So, Lord, I pray that you'll just uh, bring us your Holy Spirit into our midst right now. And this I pray in Jesus' name, and it's in his efficacious blood I pray. Amen. Now, if you folks have your Bibles, uh, you can turn to uh, Matthew chapter 24. This is the opening scripture that I'm going to be using. And um, this talks about the uh, end times. And... Um, it's when the uh, disciples ask, uh, the disciples came to him and they want to know, um, you know, what will surely come to pass. In other words, the end of the age, the end of the world. Let's go ahead and read that. In, um, okay, here it is. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall the son of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That's a very important verse right there. For many will come, shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall arise, shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endured to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nation, and then the end shall come. You notice the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. The Bible also says that even the very elect, oh, here it is, verse 24, for there shall, be, shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs, signs and wonders. Insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Signs and wonders. Today I want to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, that's a plague upon the land uh, for many, many years. And it gets worse. You find it in supermarkets. You find it in uh, car stereos. You find it in home stereos. 
You find it everywhere you go. When you turn on the TV, you find it there. And this is the uh, uh, subject I want to deal with is, did God give rock and roll to you? Compromise and deception is infiltrating Christianity today. And before I get started, I know you're saying, oh, this is another anti-Christian rock or anti-you know, anti-rock and roll. You know, here's another one of these guys that hates rock and roll and thinks it's of the devil and all that. Well, I want to tell you something. I got a shock for you. Instead of confessing, one preacher used to confess that, that he was a hater of rock and roll. I'm going to confess to you that I loved, loved rock and roll music. Since the very beginning, early in my life, and I want to give you a personal testimony about that. When I was growing up, although my mom was a listener of country and western music, uh, the music from in my school days, even in my elementary school days, we used to listen to rock and roll music. We used to listen to groups like Los Lobos, Black is Black. Uh, I used to have Alice Cooper records. School's Out was one of my favorite. I used to run that in the ground. My brother refuses to listen to that song because I played it so much. And I want to be elected. And I'm 18 and all those. I didn't realize that the man was into Satanism or that he was possessed by a spirit. I didn't know any of that stuff. And I find that man confessing to be a Christian but still doing that kind of work. And that bothers me. And that's the subject. And I'm not here to just bash everybody. I'm here to expose the devil for who he is. He's a deceiver and he's a liar. Even when I became a Christian many, many years ago, and it's been 20 or 30 years ago, and uh, when I first accepted the Lord, well, actually, it wasn't the first time. The first time I accepted the Lord was a very young child in, at a Christian camp when I was very young. But later in my teenage years, I decided to sow my wild oats, so to speak. And yes, I went to a lot of rock concerts. I went to see groups like Van Halen. I went to see groups like Blue Oyster Cult, Heart, all of them. And up until a couple of years ago, I still liked them. Even as a Christian, professed Christian. And I'll tell you why. After I became a Christian later in my, uh, early in my adult life, before I was 20 years old when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, and I was convicted of my sins, I didn't go to no rock concert and, and answer an altar call. Although I did go to a lot of Christian concerts that did do altar calls. And I answered some of those altar calls, and you know what? It didn't alter my life. Although people say, well, your life was already altered. You were serving Jesus and reading his word. The King James Bible. Although back then I was reading the NIV, didn't realize how corrupt it was. So... Um, so all throughout my life, I, I started going to Christian concerts. I started going to see uh, Petro was one of my favorite bands. In my car stereo, I would crank up, you know, praise ye the Lord and, and, and all that stuff. But yet it really didn't affect me because I still felt the same way I did when I was going to secular rock concerts. Nothing changed. Let's read another verse in, uh, in Isaiah 14. 
and I may be jumping around here, and that's just uh, just the way I I uh, roll here. I really don't prepare much, but I do a lot of research, lots and lots of research, and you're going to see by clips and stills and and uh, uh, pictures what I'm going to illustrate what I'm talking about here. So we go to Isaiah 14, and we're going to start in verse 12. And I want to tell you about a person who is still deceiving people today. And I hope you're prayerfully seeing the correlation here. Hopefully. Because I want to tell you, in my testimony I just gave you, for many, many years, I would go to rock concerts. I would go see, I saw Res Band. I saw, I saw Mylon Lefebvre and Broken Heart. I used to work with a, uh, a group out of, used to be in Grants Pass, out of Wilderville, Oregon, called Servant. Many, many years ago. And they had all the laser light shows in the slide presentations and everything. And they were still thinking that they were serving Jesus. But I'm going to show you how they were sorely deceived. Getting back into Isaiah 14, starting in verse 12. How art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? And Lucifer is also called the day star. Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken, weaken the nations? How did he weaken the nations? Let's read on. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. But yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that maketh the earth tremble and did shake kingdoms? Folks, he's been doing that for thousands and thousands of years. And folks, do me a favor. Don't look for Satan in Anton LaVey's Church of Satan. Or, oh yeah, the secular rock groups. You're right, Bill, they do serve the devil. They even sing that in their lyrics and, and blah, blah, blah. The devil is not a person that runs around with a pitchfork and a, and a, a, a spiked tail. Folks, he's in your church. He sits in your pews. He could be the most spiritual person. You think, why does it say what I just read in Matthew 24? Why does it say that even the very elect, the most spiritual minded person, Somebody like a Peter or a Paul could be deceived. And that's why I'm bringing this to you. The creeping compromise started in the beginning. The best, most spiritual, godly music is found where? That's a good question, isn't it? It was heaven. Who was the worship leader in heaven? Satan or Lucifer. Let's look in Ezekiel 28. It says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and diamonds, and beryl, and ox, and jasper, and sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets, and thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day thou was created. Not only was he worshiping God with his 
singing voice. No. He was an instrument. God created him as a instrument. This is the tabrets and pipes were prepared in thee in the day thou was created. God created him as a musician, as a musical instrument. Thou art, <clears throat> verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou was walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect. He wasn't stupid. He was perfect. He was almost like God. He was created by God. In thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity, iniquity was found in thee. By multitude of thy merchandise, verse 16, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Folks, I'm telling you, This man knew his music. Music. Don't you get it? Music. It was a part of his character. I believe when he was in the garden, he was playing beautiful music to Eve, seducing her with music. You know, they say music soothes the savage beast. Well, what does it do to a female when you play those love sonnets? And she just melts. You see, and this creeping compromise has entered in the world. Let's go to Jeremiah 10 too. And then we'll move, we'll move into some, some uh, evidences here. It's uh, Jeremiah chapter 10. Verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed that the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed by them. See, back in the 50s and 60s, popular music began to change. There was jazz. There was... Rhythm and blues, there was all these things, big bands, all that was adopted from music that was brought over from Africa, African chants, and they used drums, and they worked themselves up to a frenzy. And you know, getting back to my testimony, all the churches that I went to, the churches I loved to go to, were the churches where the worship service was with guitars and drums so we could just get all excited for Jesus and clap our hands, all ye people. Shout unto the God of a voice of triumph and dance and sing and get work ourselves up to a frenzy. And if you've been to those churches or currently going to those churches, you know what I'm talking about. And you work yourself up to a frenzy and oh, oh, and then you feel the tingling all over. Oh, it must be the... Holy Spirit of God, and then you fall on your face. And the music kind of mellows out. And then you're ready to be indoctrinated by whatever the preacher's preaching. The mind, the frontal lobe, is now in complete control by somebody else. Whether you think it's the Holy Spirit or an unholy spirit. That choice is up to you, folks. See, God given us a freedom of choice. You may think I'm out the window here. Oh, Phil, you know, you, you must have been burned by, by somebody. No. I woke up to the truth. And the Bible says about the truth will set you free. 
Sure, there's some godly, and I'll show you some godly examples. But they may be even deceptive too. It's just all in how you use it. That's what they say. The church, as you can see, and I'm going to show you some clips, the following clips, is how the church has come closer and closer to the world when the Bible says, be separate. I know that you can do it. Folks, you cannot offer strange fire. You cannot take a coal from the heathen fire and place it on the altar of God. A lot of these people take certain songs, like, for example, the title of our program, Did God Give Rock and Roll to You? That was taken from a song called God Gave Rock and Roll to You. This song was originally written by a man named Rod Argent. Rod Argent was a rock and roll group in the 60s, late 60s. And here's a clip of his uh, music right here. I'll just play you a couple of notes from it. Now, a lot of people say, and people like Larry Norman said, why should the devil have all the good music? Well, there's a lot of truth to that saying, because the devil has all those music, and more. But you cannot take a song, just like Nadab and Abihu did strange fire on the altar of God, and expects results from it. And I challenge you, and this is the challenge I'm going to be giving even in the trailer of this, of this program, which will be on Facebook and, and on YouTube. You show me one. Now, I'm only asking for one. I mean, one's insignificant. But I want to hear a response from you out there. I want to know if somebody who had been to a rock concert, let's say Petra, Or any of them. You can name them all. Mylon Lefebvre, all those. Who's playing? You know, there's Tourniquet. Um, man, I'm going too far back. Uh, DC Talk. Um, you know, any of those modern contemporary Christian music groups that responded to an altar call at a concert. Now, listen closely now. This is the challenge. I want to know if somebody who gave their heart to Jesus Christ the very next day not only went to church and committed themselves, but went to college or went into the uh, mission field. Now, Christian rock music, Larry Norman came out in the 70s preaching this through his music. I want to know one person, I'll put them on this program, I'll pay the expense, whatever it is. I want to find one person out there that through gave his heart to Jesus Christ at an altar call, went, to, went, to, uh, went on to the mission field, is now a minister of God today. I know I'm putting my neck out here on this. I'm not, I'm not talking to somebody who grew up in the church and backslid and then came back. I want to find somebody who was in the world all their life, messed up on drugs, came to a, 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 a Christian rock, so-called Christian rock concert, gave his heart to Jesus Christ, and is now serving God full-time in the mission field. Because I guarantee you, of all the years I have been a professed Christian, none of that transpired for me. 
And I joined a ministry that had a rock band with it. And most of the time we worked our buns off planting trees just to support that band on tour. I want to see some fruit, folks. I want to see some life-changing fruit. I want to see somebody who's been serving God today that went to a Larry Norman concert, if you know who I'm talking about, and we're going to get into more of him uh, later. But that's my challenge out there. Even if you look in uh, um, some of these uh, so-called Christian rock groups, you'll, you'll find occult symbols. I was shocked when I did research on this. I was so shocked. You know, even my favorite band, one of my favorite bands was Resurrection Band. Look at this album cover. It's steeped in a cult. And this is a Christian band that preaches. And it has a, a, a great ministry in, in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm going to show you some comparisons. There, there was a band that I loved for years. I loved these guys. They were called the Daniel Band. And here's a clip from one of their uh, videos. You know, this clip looks no different. As you look at that, it reminds me of a couple of uh, Scorpion videos and many other ones. Here, here's another band called Saint. Now, I had the lead singer in my house. Many years ago, he came and stayed in my house. Of course, he was wanting me to promote his uh, rock opera, which never I don't think ever transpired. But listen to this, his voice. Listen to his voice and see if it reminds you of something. Speaking of Daniel Band, if you ever listen to their, uh, some of the music, it sounds like this band. And if you do interviews with them, and I'm going to show you interviews with the artists, the Christian artists themselves, not the secular artists, but the Christian artists themselves who confess that their life is a mess. Well, I tell you what, if you're on a gospel group and you end up taking drugs, that's something's wrong, folks. You know, Russ, one of the things that scares me more than anything else is a talented young kid. You were, what, just 22 years 22. old when you came, came to the Imperials? Mm. Whether you're 22 or 25, 27, mm. that's still young, 30. Mm -hmm. 
and to be thrust into the spotlight. You know, you know, Abby was only 19, 20, or 21 when she yeah. was thrown into the spotlight. Mm -hmm. And you were, and uh, and you were with the Imperials how long? Five years. Five years. And then, so you would be 27, 28, 27, and then started solo. your own solo thing. Yep. For, for how long? Oh, Bill, um, till uh, till I joined the vocal band, um, I was solo. Uh, yeah. Uh, how many, uh, did you win any Grammys with the Imperials? I won uh, three Grammys with the Imperials and, and, and two and solo Grammys. Two, so, so five Grammys. Mm -hmm. A lot of people knew who you were. The, yeah. Knew, uh, knew your face, knew your name. Yeah, it, it, and it's, uh, it's quite... How, uh, how'd you handle it? <laughs> I hid, Bill. I hid a lot. I, I, I learned early on that, that uh, people wanted to see a certain thing. And... Uh, and I knew down in my heart I wasn't. And so I hid. I knew what I wanted to be. Um, but I had a whole lot of growing to do. And it required a whole lot of pain. Um, and it seemed life had some pretty hard, hard blows. Um, and I was faced with, faced with situations that absolutely cut my legs out from under me. Um, to the point, uh, you're wondering if, if the thing you're singing about is even real. Mm -hmm. And uh, you find yourself totally alone because you're afraid to let anybody in. And then comes depression. Mm -hmm and you choose ways to deal with depression a lot of times that aren't healthy and it causes you to make decisions that you shouldn't make and then you find yourself sliding and losing hold of uh, the thing that brought you there and that's the power of Jesus um, there's been more than one occasion that um, you would hop on a plane and come to Nashville because you heard I was needing help. And you came. And there have been several times in my life when I was about to go under. Um, and friends stepped in. But more than all of that, I'm turning into a vessel here crying, but Turning in all of that, I found the real Jesus. I found the one that understands and forgives and takes a young boy that's full of questions and fear and hurt and pain and then he begins to mold him like, like clay. And he begins to knock off those rough edges. <laughs> and... Uh, and insecurities and fears and uh, he begins to make a man um, and then after a while you start standing and singing with more conviction that you've ever had in your life because Christ has done a great work in you and it's not just a song somebody wrote and it's not just a, a, a song that you've heard, but it's your story now where much has been forgiven. Much has been forgiven. And you stand with joy and freedom and sing like you've never sang before because he's alive. And he's worked a great work in me. And he's made me what I am today. And that's why when I sing, to God be the glory. Or, because what labels and, and uh, promoters and all the things that, that whirled around my life that made me insecure and scared. Jesus took all of that and he made me whole. And let me just say this. When we were in Israel last August... <laughs> was one of the final stages of Jesus molding it all and making it right.
And I came home and Tori said, what is it? And I said, Tori, there's been a prayer for 40 years. Jesus answered that prayer when I was in Israel. And all those hurtful memories and all those painful memories, all of those things that crippled me when I was a child. Somehow he got in there and did something that therapy couldn't do, did something that antidepressants couldn't do. He took this mind <laughs> and he made it whole. In that great big hole that had paralyzed me for years, he filled it with himself. And that's what I had been looking for my whole life. All these people, Daryl Mansfield, and even Striper. Now, Striper had a falling out. They got tired of their uh, looking like bumblebees. And what does the Bible say about being effeminate? These guys look like women. But now they're even worse. Have you seen their newer albums? I mean, To Hell with the Devil was a very controversial one. Then they came out with an album called Against the Law, saying, oh, the law was done away with at the cross. I don't think so. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And now they're back together again. They broke up for a while. They had some problems. They went on solo. But they got back together and made a couple more albums. Look at the covers of these albums. And speaking of covers... The whole album of Striper's latest album are cover tunes from all their favorite secular artists, including Judas Priest, a total satanic band. What's going on here, people, is that the devil is using these people. I mean, look at some of these people here. And I'm not judging these people. Please pray for these people. Their lives are a mess. Here's Sandy Patty. And I read a testimony by her that she didn't make it as a mouseketeer. When you wish upon a star makes no difference who you are anything your heart desires will come to you I was devastated. Here I thought I was on the edge of my dream and I was on the edge of disaster. I went home and probably cried for about three days. She wanted to go to Disneyland and be a mouseketeer, but she didn't make it, so her second choice was to become a gospel singer and have numerous uh, multiple affairs. And she slightly changed her last name, but I don't want to get into all that, but I'm just showing you how deceptive the devil is. What about Ray Boltz? He has accepted his homosexuality and he still thinks he's going to make it into heaven being a homosexual. No. How about Jennifer Knapp? I love Jennifer Knapp. I used to listen to Jennifer Knapp a lot. <clears throat> I had no idea she was a lesbian. Tonight, a Christian singer's shocking admission. She admits she's a lesbian, alienating some of her fans, angering devout followers. Jennifer Knapp reveals how a God-loving woman rejected church teachings to be true to herself. What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Why was Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed? What does it say in the Bible, in the book of Revelations, where it says no effeminate? Lovers of themselves. What does the Bible say? The end times and be lovers of themselves. Former lead singer of Whiteheart. 
was busted on child charges of child molestation. That's a fine example. What does the Bible say about child molesters and who abuse children? Jesus says, suffer the children to come unto me, but not to be molested. That's sick, folks. Look at Uncle Randy Stone, you know, we call him Randy Stone, you know, he, he was, uh, you know, with Larry Norman and that crowd, Daryl Mansfield and all that crowd. Randy Stone, you know, <laughs> you can sure, he, he's telling everybody he loves them. Now, we talked about, uh, in my, a lot, in videos, um, we have talked about pagan hand signs and demonic hand signs. Le Larry Norman, the grandfather the so-called grandfather of Christian rock and roll. Come to find out he was a con man and he had numerous affairs and then he fathered a child out of wedlock. You radicals! You radicals want all out revolution? You got it. I saw this this guy up on stage and the light was all around him and he had long blonde hair and he looked just like an angel. And there was this lead singer uh, with long white blonde hair, dazzling showman. Well, my earliest experience was that I was on Capitol Records and I opened for The Doors and Jefferson Airplane, Janis Joplin, Hendrix. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. Yes, I do. I thought, well, there he goes, you know. He's going to do songs about Jesus. That's great. He was starting to actually develop this musical, spiritual hybrid. was trying to shake up some of the more comfortable middle class or elderly professional people that were made up most of what the congregation was. It's like he went, you know, 50 yards up the beach and stuck the flag in and said, okay, now everyone else, follow me. It just held all kinds of promise for what could be accomplished and it, and it was so needed at that time. remember that piercing stare. I felt like it was as if Jesus himself was there. He, he kind of carried himself that way. And then Larry called me and he said, I just was able to create my own company called Solid Rock Records. He was a performer and I used to watch him change from like night and day. He goes into that Brian Wilson world. He is your one bona fide loose cannon nutcase. And Larry broke up our family. I think there's no other way to put it. Trouble coming. I just gotta get away. Wasn't the devil has all the good music. Why is the devil singing the music? And I felt so stinking betrayed. I just went, how can you do that? How do you not get this? You're the guy that led me to the Lord. How could you do this?
And you see what's happening here, folks, with the music? Satan is in the music in the church. He's not worried about the worldly satanic rock groups out there. He knows they're already his. He's infiltrated the church for many, many years, and he's deceiving people for eons now. Idol worship. It's not only golden calves anymore. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God.
want it over there. I think you want it in the... I can get anything you can handle. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. You can't stop it. It's coming to a town near you. It used to be called contemporary. Some call it relevant. We're so cool, we call it contemporvent. Young hip guy welcoming all with graphic tee and cool glasses. I welcome everybody with arms wide open, revealing my tattoo so you know I have a past. Quirky transition to band, invite everyone to stand. Let's do it. This is the song that everyone knows. It's the song that everyone knows. song that nobody knows nobody knows this song I want you to learn this song and by my record 
just want to invite the ushers up as we prepare for our offering. Hmm. Feel free to give if you feel led. It's between you and God, but we're tracking it. One man has all the answers. I have all the answers. Showing a picture of a puppy and or a baby from an impoverished third world nation. Speaking softly to draw you in. And then emphatically, driving home my point. On pause. Whispering. Repetition. Still pausing. Pained expression. Long prayer so that the worship leader can get back on stage. This is the closing song with strings that'll make you cry. Coming soon to your town, a new kind of church. You will be lifted high and challenged to grow. We call that Grotivation. You call this Sunday morning folks i know some of these people and i know i'm going to get a lot of flack for it one of my favorites is barry mcguire barry mcguire was uh with the christie minstrels back in the early 50s and 60s later branched out into a solo career wrote, uh sang eve of destruction which just soared above the charts spent all his time in hate ashbury getting stoned with the mamas and the papas and all those people. You know what he's doing today? No, he's not doing much with the Christian stuff. He's tripping the 60s. Tripping the 60s. I am Barry McGuire. I put together a really fun show. We call it Tripping the 60s. We sing the songs and tell the stories from our own personal adventures with our friends on the stage, behind the scenes. Just stuff that happened during that unforgettable decade. Green, green, it's green, they say, on the far side of the hill, oh yeah. Green, green, I'm going away to where the grass is greener still. You know, I told my mama on the day I was born. Well, I was recording. Folks, all the so-called Christian rock music, any rock, any kind of music, especially with drums in it, that has that syncopated beat. And you notice in churches today, that's all you see is guitars and drums. Guitars and drums. And people working themselves up to a front. Well, you know, that's the same exact thing that these tribes in Africa did. They would, not just in Africa, in other, in other cultures as well. Folks, there's no difference. And they call it the moving of the Holy Spirit. Tribes call it calling up their idols. Folks, we need to get rid of our idols. Our idols are not just stone. These are idols. These are pagan idols, yes. But look at these idols. There was one person I still look up to, although he passed away many years ago, is Keith Green. And sure, his music has influenced people, but his uncompromised stand. Yes, he used drums, he, used rock, he did rock music. The best music he did was when he was live. My eyes are dry, my faith is on, my heart is hard, my heart is hard. Oh, and I know how, and I know how I ought to be, I ought to be alive to you, alive to you, and dead to me, and dead to me. I just want to close with a song that the Lord gave my wife. really need to sing your wife's song. Make my life 
Satan is out there as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But I want to tell you, folks, he's in every aspect of life. And he could be in the most spiritual churches. He may be preaching from the pulpit. And what he's preaching may be the most right on message. He could be the best preacher in the world, the best evangelist. But people don't realize that. People push him off as this little thing. But then on the other hand, they're delving in his territory where he has become a friend to them. So folks, I've showed you this evidence Please prayerfully consider it. I know I'm going to make a lot of people angry. But everybody I've seen in contemporary Christian music realm, they say, well, because we were living for God, the Satan tacked us even worse. No, he didn't. You opened yourself up to him. Folks, please, I plead with you, read your Bible. What was Satan? All his music is doing is pulling you away from God and his true Holy Spirit. Read in Genesis where he is deceived. Eve in the garden. Read in Job how he walks up and to and fro deceiving. Look what he did to Job. Look at those poor people who are tormented by him. Even in the religious world. Now I want to offer this. I don't have it yet, but I will be. Is a Distraction Dilemma series by Christian Birdall. Have you ever asked yourself... Does it really matter what music I listen to as a Christian? Or why is the music changing so much in my church and is it okay? What does the Bible really say about music? Is all Christian music okay for us because it has a Christian label on it? Is there any way to know for sure what is okay and what isn't? Friends, I'm here to tell you, yes. There are answers to these questions and many more. Hello friends, I'm Christian Berdahl, Director of Shepherd's Call Ministry. 
I would like to personally invite you to the Three Angels Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico, this November 4th through 6th, for an amazing seminar on music entitled The Distraction Dilemma. I have had the privilege of serving God full time for over 15 years now, 11 of those years specifically in music ministry. I began to share seminars on music around the world, in fact, in six different countries in front of thousands of people of different cultures, the response has been the same, amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Christian and Kobe for coming. We believe every word was from God. We've never heard anything like this before. The information that you shared with us was astounding, amazingly clear and complete. I am so thankful we came to your seminar. We had heard some of this information before, but never as effectively as you presented it. You also shared many things that we had never heard before. Our children, ages 18 and 15, were so blessed by your seminar. You absolutely had their attention, and we all learned a lot. These messages are essential to the time in which we live. Thank you for bringing them to us. This has been a gift with eternal significance. Your recent weekend series, The Distraction Dilemma, was an outstanding success, according to those who attended, both young and old. Your material was well documented, presented in a winsome way, and incredibly relevant. Thank you again for your careful research and the refreshing way you and your charming wife presented what to me has been a life-changing look at music and the effect it has on me and on our family. I'm just sitting at the church in Malmö listening to Christian Berdahl. This is groundbreaking stuff on the realities in the music world. Make sure you get to listen to this. These are urgent messages of warning for all young people. I just want to thank you for changing my life through your series on music. I had known I was going to be lost if I didn't change my music preferences. Thank you so much for showing me the truths about music and for saving my life. Anyone who is wavering in this area, listen to Christian and God. They're telling the truth. I am so happy that I could experience this seminar about a huge part of my life, music. I feel so determined to change what I listen to now that I know what is wrong and what is right. I want to thank you for inspiring me to change who I am and what I listen to. Some people say that we should only sing hymns even without a piano. While on the other side, people say that we can play and perform and sing anything that we want to, even if it causes our brother or sister to stumble. Our research reveals, friends, that the truth lies in the middle. And this seminar presents a balanced view of music based on the Bible, inspired writings, science, and even the music industry itself. It's truly amazing. So don't forget, it starts this November 4th at 7 p.m. It's powerful and it's free. I hope to see you there. Make sure and visit our website for more information at distractiondilemma.com. Which I highly recommended. I don't have the set yet. He's still working on it. As soon as I get it, I will get it. He expounds even further on this, even in the entertainment. And this is why it was so tough for me to put this video together. Because number one, I love this music. Or I loved this music. It, it's in my head. It follows me everywhere I go. But I can't stand to listen to it anymore because I see Satan all over it. And it's not because I hate the music. I loved music ever since I was a kid. And you ask a lot of these Christians, who influenced you? What music group out there influenced you? It was, it was Elvis Presley, or it was the Rolling Stones, or it was the Beatles.
folks. Read your Bible. The truth will set you free, folks. And remember my challenge. I would love to find somebody out there that uh, who is serving God 100% either in the mission field or he's a great evangelist today, winning souls. Because you see these these bands crisscross the country and around the world for years, years. Where's the fruit? David Wilkerson, a hater of Christian rock and roll. Wrote the book Crossing the Switchblade. It Turned a lot of people around. And they're still serving God today. And those testimonies got me. That's part of the reasons why I'm here today. Is those kind of testimonies. I didn't need, I didn't need rock music for that. Religious rock, Christian rock, whatever you want to call it. But it's so prevalent today. And the lies are being exposed left and right. I just barely scratched the surface. I could, the more I dug into this research, it was heartbreaking, folks. The time is ending. We are in the last days. And Satan knows it. And he's working harder and harder and harder. To keep God's people deceived. And he'll, do, he'll use religion. He probably knows more scripture than anybody. He's had thousands of years. He was there when the creation of the King James Bible. He's seen all that. There's nothing new under the sun for him. And he's going to get worse and worse. Why do you think this sickening doctrine of once saved, always saved? Oh, as long as you say this little prayer, then you could go off still be a homosexual, still be a lesbian, still be a, a sleep with all your women, do your drugs, do everything, because you said that little prayer, you're on your way to heaven. Praise the Lord. Where's that in the Bible? Did Peter or Paul go back to their former, they did for a while, but they became evangelists. They didn't go back to their fishing nets. They became evangelists. They died. There's your example right there. All through the Bible. When they got converted, they set the world upside down. Are you doing that today? Are you just cranking up the music in your stereo? You know, that's what we used to do. We used to drive around town, downtown, go on cruise night, and crank up Christian music blaring away. Oh, people loved it. They didn't pay any attention to the lyrics. It's going to be preaching is what brings a response and the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks for watching, folks. God bless.